really excited about what we're here to announce and discuss today. Uh, I am a firm believer that uh, connectivity is uh, the fabric of the future. Uh, it's only uh, because some people had a good idea to pave and organize road systems thousands of years ago that we're able to talk about things like autonomous vehicles today. And so I think that part of this is about what we're building for today, but I think we also need to keep very clear in our minds that we're building something that will produce the unimaginable for tomorrow. And so connectivity is really an infrastructure that's going to change the face of civilization forever, just the way that road systems and uh, aqueduct and electric grid have changed the world before we got here. I was at an Internet of Things conference um, a, a few months ago, and I said something to, the, to that crowd that was a little provocative. And I said, without the Internet, we're just talking about a bunch of things. And quite frankly, we already have those things. So the whole discussion about IoT is about making these things smarter. And the way that that's enabled is through that connectivity. And so what we're talking about today, what we're announcing today in San Francisco, is a huge step in that direction. We've established uh, with our partner, Sigfox, who will be up to discuss uh, the more details in a minute, the, the largest Internet of Things specific network in the country. And uh, uh, when I came to San Francisco, I was told that all, f all good things start in San Francisco. And so uh, this is a perfect example of that. So I'm really proud of all the work that, that's gone into this. Uh, our chief innovation officer, who will be up in a moment, Jay Nath was instrumental in all of this. Our libraries department, uh, Luis, thank you for the this partnership on enabling this. And of course, Sigfox. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Alan Proethis, uh, president of Sigfox North America, to the stage to, uh, to talk about the partnership from, from their perspective. Alan? So good morning and welcome. If I seem distracted as I'm still staring at this great venue here. Trying to figure out how to get one of these statues home. So thank you for joining us this morning for the launch of our US network. And first off, I'd like to thank the mayor of San Francisco, Ed Lee, the city's information officer, Miguel Gamino, chief innovation officer, Jay Nath, for their help with this launch. The city of San Francisco has been incredibly gracious and very supportive and truly appreciates the, appreciates the challenges and opportunities around deploying technology. And it's not an accident that San Francisco is at the center of the world when it comes to high tech. You know, from the gold rush that launched this city almost 165 years ago to the present gold rush of high tech, this is a place that was built upon being able to identify and support the next big thing. And I'm here to tell you that the Internet of Things, or IoT as we call it, is the next big thing. And simply put, IoT is the ability to collect data from everything and to use this information to make better decisions. You know, Peter Drucker, the father of modern management, famously stated that you cannot manage what you cannot measure. So what happens when we can measure everything? To me, it's new services, new products, things we could not even conceive about just a few years ago. It takes quite a bit of teamwork with companies across the spectrum to create these new business models, but it begins with the assumption, as Miguel said, that you have access to the data in the first place. And depending on the analysts that you follow, the world will have somewhere between 25 and 50 billion connected devices globally in the next five years. At the same time, we only expect less than 60 million cellular IoT connections in the US and a little over a quarter billion cellular connections globally at the end of the year. So other devices will connect on Wi-Fi or other short-range technologies, but there remains a gap, and it's a gap of billions. How will these things connect? So existing cellular technologies are fantastic. You know, whether you use them for collecting lots of data that's streaming from a jet airline engine or for watching a video of a sneezing panda. Nothing handles large amounts of wireless data better. 
And this technology has a very important place, but analysts predict that only a minority of business cases will be able to afford it. And the fact is that existing wireless technologies are optimized for use cases that involve data in situations that can pay a premium. And the challenge is, is that significant number of IoT devices are just whispering rather than shouting data. What they are sending is important, but they can be sent in little bits. Data from utility meters, smoke detectors, traffic sensors, asset tracking, all very low bandwidth. And plus, the battery supporting these applications must last for years. So try that with your smartphone. And this is really where Sigfox comes in. Sigfox is the leading cost-efficient, low-power IoT network in the world. And what we do is allow the billions of things to communicate that cannot afford to connect using conventional wireless technologies. And our unique technology can be built in the products at incremental cost and then connect for just a few dollars a year at scale. We give voice to the billions of devices that have something to say but were never meant to use existing networks. You could think of our niche as the billions of orphaned devices out there right now. So we've announced deployments in 11 countries in Europe, and last month we announced coverage of the top 10 U.S. cities sometime in the first quarter of this year. And you'll hear more exciting news about our deployments in the coming months, mostly because demand for our services are very high. But let me share just a couple examples about what we're doing to make this more concrete. So one partner, Securitas Direct, is the top provider of monitored home security systems in Europe. And they're combining all their 3G connected alarm systems with Sigfox technology to ensure that alarms go through even when GSM jammers are used. So millions of alarm systems have been implemented with Sigfox technology since they already have compatible radio modems in their products. There's another company called Leasebox that's in the home care space that is providing increased transparency by enabling relatives to know exactly which assistance their elderly relatives are receiving and at the same time helping local governments save millions by automating what used to be error-prone paperwork. And it's a solution that requires no local internet connection. You never have to plug it in. It just works out of the box. Another partner is called Smokio that's providing fire detectors to alert you that the product actually works um, and that the battery is, is actually working and there's power to the unit. I didn't realize this, but do you realize almost one quarter of all smoke detectors malfunction? But often you don't know this until after there's an incident. And finally, agriculture, as you may know, accounts for as much as 70% of the water usage in the world. And of course, we're facing a drought in many places, including California right now. We're working with a company called WeNAT that's deploying a completely wireless connected sensor solution that measures and transmits soil and air data directly to a farmer's smartphone or computer. And using our network, these sensors can easily be just placed in the field and the data is automatically dispatched, no activation with the benefit of having an extremely long battery life. A rich ecosystem of partners is critical to having lots of choice around devices. And to achieve this, we've partnered with world-class companies who are recognized from the area as well, like TI, Silicon Labs, Flextronics, and many more. And of course, one of our early US solution partners, Glen Canyon, will speak in just a moment about their innovative, tiny, and super cost-efficient electricity meters using us for connectivity. And while you may not be familiar with Sigfox before today, leading global organizations such as Intel Capital, Telefonica, NTT Docomo, Air Liquid, and Samsung are among our investors. Industrial and technology companies of many types have realized there's this huge gap in the IoT market, and that Sigfox is optimized to fill this need while remaining, remaining very complementary to existing technologies. So while San Francisco is the perfect place to begin our US expansion, we're very excited to aggressively continue our US and global rollout over the next year. This city has had the vision to support high tech, and we see this as similar to Sigfox's foresight to create, define, and deploy a global IoT network that's optimized for the particular needs of a niche of billions of devices. It should be in a very exciting time ahead for all of us. Thanks. I'd like to now invite Jay Nath, Chief Innovation Officer, to come forward for a few comments. Uh, 
Hi, my name is Jane Ath. I'm the mayor's chief innovation officer. And first of all, I want to thank uh, Innovation Hangar and Reckon Park for hosting us in such a beautiful and innovative location. I also want to thank uh, the director of the library, Louise Herrera, uh, John Updike, the director of um, real estate, for supporting all of our efforts. And of course, uh, Miguel Gamino, our, our CIO, and Sigfox for making all of this happen here today. So San Francisco, as we know, is a city renowned for its entrepreneurs, hackers, makers, people who are building the next generation of products and services. And today's announcement is another tool in their toolkit so that they can build better products by connecting them to the internet. Our vision is to make San Francisco the IoT capital of the world for two reasons. First, we want to create a spectrum of jobs. In support of the mayor's five-point manufacturing plan, in partnership with OEWD, our Economic Development Workforce Agency, and uh, SF Made, we want to see entrepreneurs design and manufacture these products right here in San Francisco. Hardware is different than software. It requires assembly, installation, maintenance, customer service, solid middle-class jobs. Second, these products and services can make a huge impact in how we operate our city in making ourselves more effective, efficient, and responsive. Um, whether it's in transportation, public safety, or healthcare. And you can imagine intelligent streetlights that know when they're not operating and can alert us. Or if we have moisture sensors and we can actually water parks when they should be watered. Or if you're a driver, knowing when there's an empty parking spot. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of products and services that have yet to be created or imagined. And that's why we're holding our city's first hardware hackathon next month in partnership with Sigfox and many others to showcase some real world examples based on the needs of our city government. This is literally our city government coming with some of the challenges and problems to the table with entrepreneurs to catalyze this conversation. This is gonna be a separate announcement you'll hear about shortly in the next month. And with that, I want to bring up um, John to talk more about Glen Canyon and how they're using their product to connect people to smart meters. Thank you. Good morning. I'm the hardware guy. Like all hardware guys, I come with a bag of uh, small tricks. The Internet of Things has been an incredible, let's say, revolutionary effect on the world of networking and communications. It's enabled a whole new family of hardware devices, smart sensors, and services as well. The service component of uh, servicing the data from utilities uh, and other um, businesses is, is an incredibly large phenomenon. A quick example. We metered the city of Seattle, 400,000 homes. We provided data on a one-minute basis to our uh, cloud-based service, Google. It generated 1.3 terabytes per day. And as the saying goes, I think it was Everett Dirksen said, pretty soon you have real numbers. Uh, the information revolution is what this has enabled. Having a large number of <clears throat> devices providing a small amount of information per hour, per minute, per day is absolutely the equivalent of a few devices presenting very large amounts of data. So for Allen and Sigfox, I want to show you what, uh, what they have uh, en enabled for us. The electric meter business is one that we participate in. We have about 120 million meters installed worldwide. The world market is 220 million meters per year. The U.S. is only a small proportion of that, something less than 2% of the world market. And just to highlight it very quickly, 
This is one of our meters from the world market. You're of course going to notice it's square. It's not round. And it is highly intelligent. It has five ARM processors inside. And they do everything from web services to uh, a web server to sending and receiving emails and SMSs and a whole bunch of things. The bad news, here in California, PG&E paid $220 a piece for them and bought 10 million of them. So all of us pay an uh, extra charge of about 9% on our electric bills today in this market. Bad news. Uh, that's not going to continue. The electric utilities can't afford it, and the attorney generals of the U.S. Are, are preventing it from reoccurring. But what is happening with the enablement of IoT devices like Sigfox is smaller, lightweight meter devices instead of one of this size. Now, we, we introduce one of this size. The first customer is the city of Shanghai, who's installing five million as a pilot program of these little cigarette lighter sized packages. Well, what makes this possible? And if I haven't lost it in my pocket, I want to give you a glimmer of what the IoT is about from a hardware standpoint. Can you, can you see this? This is a Sigfox radio. It sends and receives data, 12 bytes at a time, from devices such as this, or soil moisture sensors, or water meters, or control systems for irrigation. This little device costs uh, more or less a, around a dollar and a half, and enables 15-minute information transfer to data collection, and energy control to reduce the usage of energy and water and vital commodities worldwide. Well, we're one of, one of many folks that are, that are participating in the IoT. This happens with, with some pride to say this is, this is our hardware device. These are all intelligent things. There are three microprocessors inside this little package. Two of them are 32-bit, having great computing capability. So the extension to other applications is going to happen, and it's happening now. You will find these things. You'll find them in light bulbs. You'll find them in, of course, meters. The meters will be smaller. They will be less expensive, and they will enable a whole new level of information processing and analytics. My compliments, Alan. Thank you. So could, if I can have the uh, other speakers uh, join me on stage. Um, we want to open it up to um, press or anybody else in the audience for any questions that you might have about Sigfox, the technology, or the partnership between Sigfox and our city and the work we're doing, or what we might imagine this network will be doing for our city or for entrepreneurs. We're here to take any questions that you might have. Uh, so right now what we've done is we have uh, allowed for the installation of antennas on library buildings, um, and that's the, the partnership with the library is that component. Um, it's at no cost to the city. We haven't spent any money doing it. Um, you know, we're not paying for the sensors. All that's uh, provided by Sigfox. We're, we're uh, allowing for access to uh, the buildings for mounting of those, 
those uh, backhaul antennas uh, that Alan could speak to more specifically on the technology side. Yeah, the big difference, uh, thank, the big difference to the way we deploy networks versus a more conventional cellular network, a more conventional deployment has lots of equipment, lots of power, lots of backhaul. Um, for us, you're talking about something that's roughly the size of a briefcase with a 30-inch antenna and just a DSL connection. So it's uh, you really don't even know it's there most of the time unless you're staring at it. Um, there's not the typical impacts about, you know, does the, if the wind blows, does something happen, things like that are pretty much uh, irrelevant for us. Um, but the idea is, is that San Francisco has now a leading low-power wide area network. So you could almost think of it as a, um, a very rich connectivity environment now for all these IoT experiments. And then with something like the hackathon that Jay talked about, it provides a, a connectivity platform that people can pretty much do whatever they like on it. So it just is, is part of uh, the San Francisco leading the charge in, in tech. Just uh, to add to it, a couple things. One is uh, this is a, a pilot initiative, so we want to better understand, you know, what value Sigfox brings to our communities and to our city government. Um, and it's on a on a one one year lease, and so we'll be able to sort of renew that if we see that's that's a good fit or not. Um, the other thing to to recognize is that. You know, we're open to uh, other sort of technologies. We're not saying that this is the right one or there's, uh, we really want to enable uh, different communication technologies um, that, you know, companies are providing so that we can provide that connectivity for our citizens and entrepreneurs. Any other questions? What about the hackathon? Yeah, please. Well, I think the, the pilot is, is sort of twofold. One is for um, sort of for our city government to better understand how a technology like this could be incorporated in the work that we're doing and solving some of the challenges. And I think the, the hackathon is the first uh, sort of milestone in that conversation with our city government. You know, what are those pain points? What are those challenges that we're, we're facing that could be addressed by these products and services? That's first of all. Second is that, you know, is this really... Uh, a great tool and um, technology for entrepreneurs. Are they able to build new products and services, do things that they couldn't do before? So th those are two things I think that we're going to be looking at uh, to see if this is this is something that's impactful. Miguel or Alan, just want to add to that. Hey, just uh, one comment on hackathons. The whole one of the very exciting things about hackathons is, is that you really don't know what you're going to get. I mean, that's sort of the, the way Silicon Valley works, right? The idea is, is that you create a, an environment that lends itself well to creativity and innovation, and you sort of let smart people loose, and you tend to get all kinds of interesting things out of it. And so that's, that's the idea behind the hackathon in a few weeks. Yeah, we'll be expanding. Um, so we'll continue to expand out very quickly. As I mentioned before, top 10 or 11 U.S. cities sometime in the first quarter. But you'll see this network continue to spread south, basically, now that we've had this foundational deployment here uh, in the city, um, mainly because we have so many partners in the area. I mean, you heard from, from John from Glen Canyon. I mentioned some of the sort of the chip and module level partners. But frankly, we have many others. And uh, uh, so you're going to see a, a steady, continuing rollout uh, here and in many other places. The city is uh, is under that nice warm blanket right now, so it's uh, you can drive around. We've had uh, uh, different partners and customers driving around doing tests. So uh, our outdoor coverage is excellent. We have uh, good indoor coverage. Uh, with any new network, you certainly have spots here and there, uh, but generally speaking, the network is up. And um, again, because of the flexibility of the way our technology is deployed, if when we do find new areas um, that perhaps we just haven't covered yet, um, it's pretty easy for us to just put something up there. The network's, the network's live as of right now. Yeah, the network's live as of now. Correct. I might, I might add to that. We did uh, field tests here in San Francisco uh, running with uh, our small radio device. Uh, average uh, distance between cell points was 
measured uh, at about a mile. The coverage uh, in the city from inside buildings was more than two and a half miles. And in a, a more rural setting like Los Gatos or Palo Alto, the coverage would be on the order of 10 miles. Uh, the antennas for the radio is included in this in this little board, so there's no obtrusive antenna uh, from the endpoint. And the base stations uh, operate higher the better, if I'm saying that well.